terror group, who is that, and are they connected to al-Qaeda? We turn now to our chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross. And when I know authorities are going to be looking closely at the video that we are just receiving, looking for any possible clues. Absolutely. There'll be lots of clues, uh, forensic evidence as to the kind of detonator, the timers, uh, the nature of the explosives will give clues. Uh, likely the point, according to uh, U.S. authorities, to this terror group, uh, Jamia Islamia, closely linked with al-Qaeda. Uh, they were involved in training uh, how to make bombs with al-Qaeda in uh, Afghanistan. And one of the top bomb makers of this group, Nordin Top, is his name, is a very much a wanted man today. He is believed to be behind this blast. He's the man, the money man, they call him for this group. And this group has quite a history, as you say. Indeed. They have uh, struck uh, this hotel before. Uh, in uh, 2003, the same hotel was hit. And then prior to that, in uh, October of 2002, a much deadlier blast at a, a disco uh, in Bali that killed more than 200 people, uh, uh, mostly Westerners, lots of uh, Australians, some Americans. Uh, this group has quite a record of uh, using bombs like this, and that's the indication, uh, the simultaneous nature of the blast uh, suggests this group. Well, Brian, with stepped up intelligence and, and all these security measures in, in recent years, I mean, th these things still happen. Absolutely, and with this group, uh, Indonesian and U.S. authorities were really caught off guard or with their guard down. Mm. The leader of this group, a man by the name of Hambali, was captured in 2004, and he's being held at Guantanamo. They thought they had decapitated the leadership of this group. There had been been no reporting of any threats in the last 18 months, and then this happened. A reminder that Al-Qaeda and its affiliated groups uh, may be down, but they're not out. Oh, well, yes, a stark reminder. Brian Ross, thanks so much.